Here we're going to dig a little deeper into the structures of coordination complexes by learning how to determine the oxidation number of the metal center and the count of d electrons at the metal center in a given coordination compound or complex, which is kind of a simpler version of the compound since we don't need to worry about counter ions. And this is going to be really important later, the d electron count in particular, because we're going to learn what happens to the d orbitals when the transition metal cation is surrounded by a set of ligands. It's rather surprising and rather interesting and can explain a lot of the properties of coordination compounds. So this d electron count in particular is important, and that comes from the oxidation number. The oxidation number is a prereq for that. So we're going to learn how to determine oxidation number as well. Now to determine the oxidation number, we need the overall structure of the complex. So drawing the structure of the complex and the counter ions if it's a coordination compound is sort of a prerequisite here, including in particular the total charge. The total charge is really important. So I've taken the two coordination compounds that we've been looking at so far, this cobalt ammonia complex with a charge of three plus on the complex and this iron cyanide complex with a charge of negative three on the complex and just redrawn those structures with their formulas and included the counter ions as well. When determining the oxidation state of the metal center, the first thing to do is to determine the charge in the complex and actually ignore the counter ions. We're going to ignore the chlorides in the first case and the potassiums in the second case since we've already used them in a sense to determine that the charge of the complex is three plus in this first case and three minus in the second case. And now, from that total charge and the charges on the ligands, we can infer the charge on the metal center. And here's how we go about this. First, we look at the ligands, and we consider the charge on the ligands. And to do this, think of each dative bond as associated with a lone pair on the atom that's actually bonded to the metal center, what we'll call the ligand donor atom, and draw the Lewis structure of the ligand and assess the formal charge on the ligand. In the case of NH3, well, NH3 with a lone pair on the nitrogen, this lone pair being the pair of electrons that's actually donated to create the dative bond, this molecule is a neutral molecule, so the charge on NH3 is zero. That means each of the ligands is contributing zero to the overall charge of the complex. This means that the cobalt must be entirely responsible for the charge of the complex, right? And the charge of the complex is plus three, so this means that the cobalt must have a charge of three plus. So the oxidation number of the cobalt in this complex, or O-N for short, oxidation number, is plus three for the cobalt. So again, to summarize, we assessed the charge on each of the ligands. The number of ligands is also important. Um, we'll look at that in the second case. If the ligands are all neutral, it's not as important to think about the number of ligands involved, but the number of ligands is critical when the ligand is charged. And then we compared the charge due to the ligands, which here was nil, to the total charge of the complex and reasoned that the remainder of the charge has to be due to the metal center, making the cobalt cobalt plus three. And the second case, on some level, is more interesting because if we apply the same idea and think about the Lewis structure of cyanide, well, the charge on, on cyanide is now negative one. And we've got six of those in this complex. So the total charge due to all the ligands is negative one times six or negative six. And now we compare that charge to the overall charge of the complex. Negative six due to the ligands, but the overall charge on the complex is negative three. This means that the iron must be responsible for three positive charges, right? Bringing the total charge of the complex to negative three. So here, the iron is in the plus three oxidation state or oxidation number. And notice that the sum of all the charges on the ligands, negative six, and the charge or oxidation number of the metal cation, negative three, add up to the overall charge of the, uh, sorry, positive three, add up to the overall charge on the complex, negative three. Negative six plus three is equal to negative three, the overall charge on the complex. Now let's talk about how we determine the number of d electrons at the metal center now that we have the oxidation number. The number of d electrons is just the number of valence electrons in the neutral transition metal atom minus any charge, minus the oxidation number. So cobalt, for example, if you look at the periodic table, and I encourage you to pause and do so if need be, if you look at cobalt, you'll see that cobalt 
is in group nine and so normally has nine valence electrons when neutral. This means that in the plus three oxidation state, the number of d electrons at cobalt is equal to six, right? Since this cobalt three plus has three fewer electrons than a neutral cobalt atom. So this cobalt has six d electrons or its d electron count is equal to six. Now iron is right next to cobalt in group eight. And so when neutral, it has eight valence electrons. In the iron three plus cation, there are five valence electrons remaining and all five are in the D subshell. So the iron here has five D electrons. And you'll often see this written in kind of an electron um, configuration format. We can talk about the iron center here as D5 and the cobalt center here as D6, for example. Now, at the bottom of the slide here, we have a couple of general formulas that just generalize out what we've seen with respect to oxidation number and d electron count. And I encourage you not to apply this, these formulas and this idea kind of blindly. This is just a generalization of what we've seen. And it's always a good idea, if you need to, to kind of go back to the foundations, draw the Lewis structures of the ligands, assess the formal charge, and step through things carefully, especially when you're dealing with a ligand that you've never seen before, which is going to be very common in introductory chemistry. The general idea for the oxidation number of the metal, which is this formula in the box here, is that, well, okay, the total charge on the complex is the sum of the charge of the metal center, and the ligands. Rearranging that idea leads us to, if we want to know the oxidation number of the metal center, well, we take the total charge on the complex, which is going to be known from the formula, the chemical formula of the complex or compound in which that complex is located, and we subtract all the charges of the ligands. And here this sum emphasizes that we need to account for all the ligands, you know, multiplying if we have multiple copies of the same ligand and adding a bunch of negative charges together if we have different negatively charged ligands at a metal center for that, that kind of thing. And, and here, this is a signed value, right? So negative number for negative charges, positive number for positive charges, that kind of thing. Once you have the oxidation number of the metal center, to determine the d electron count, we take the number of valence electrons in the neutral atom, subtract out the charge, right? And this gives the number of valence electrons given the oxidation number, right? We take the number of electrons in the neutral atom, subtract out the charge. This is the number of valence electrons remaining, and this is the d electron count, since all those remaining valence electrons in the cation find their way into the d subshell. And this d electron count, again, is a quantity that we're going to make use of later in this unit. 